Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get started here. Welcome to my Resident Evil 4 stream. This is the first uh, part of it. I have not played it on stream before, but I'm familiar with the game, beaten it several times. So, I'm going to start a new game. We're going to do Resident Professional. Evil 4. We'll go normal. 1998. I'll never forget it. It was the year when those grisly murders occurred in the Arklay Mountains. Soon after, the news was out to the whole world, revealing that it was the fault of a secret viral experiment conducted by the international pharmaceutical enterprise, Umbrella. The virus broke out in a nearby mountain community, Raccoon City, and hit the peaceful little town with a devastating blow crippling its very foundation. Not taking any chances, the President of the United States ordered a contingency plan to sterilize Raccoon City. With the whole affair gone public, the United States government issued an indefinite suspension of business decree to Umbrella. Soon its stock prices crashed, and for all intents and purposes, Umbrella was finished. Six years have passed since that horrendous incident. I received special training via a secret organization working under the direct control of the president. I was to assume the responsibility of protecting the new president's family. Cornel, why am I the one who always gets the short end of the stick? Yo, who are you really? Come on and tell us. You are a long way from home, cowboy. You have my sympathies. Guess that's a local's way of breaking the ice. Anyway, you know what this is all about. My assignment is to search for the president's missing daughter. What? All by yourself? <laughs> I'm sure you boys didn't just tag along so we could sing Kumbaya together at some Boy Scout bonfire. Then again, maybe you did. Oh, you crazy American. It's a direct order from the chief himself. I tell you, it's no picnic. I'm counting on you guys. It was right before I was to take on my duties of protecting the president's daughter when she was abducted. That's the ultimate reason I'm in this lonely and rural part of Europe. According to our intelligence, there's reliable information about a sighting of a girl that looks very similar to the president's daughter. Apparently, she's being withheld by some unidentified group of people. Who would have thought that my first job would have been a rescue mission? Freezing. So cold all of a sudden. Eh, must be my imagination. There's one thing that, well, there's two things Sorry, that Spain's so known for. It's its cold forest climate. Just up ahead is the village. I'll go and have a look around. Yeah, we'll stay and watch the car. Don't want to get any parking tickets. Right. Parking tickets. Good luck. Jeez. Who are these guys? Did you say something? Leon, I hope you can hear me. I'm Ingrid Hunnigan. I'll be your support on this mission. 
Loud and clear. Somehow I thought you'd be a little older. So the subject's name's Ashley Graham, right? That's right. She's the daughter of the president. So try to behave yourself, okay? <laughs> Whoever this group is, they sure picked the wrong girl to kidnap. I'll try to find some more information on my end as well. Good. Talk to you later. Leon out. Excuse me, sir? I was wondering if you might recognize a girl in this photograph. ¿Qué carajo estás haciendo aquí? ¡Lárgate, cabrón! Sorry to have bothered you. They're fine. They'll be fine. Is everything okay? There was a hostile local. I had no choice but to neutralize him. There are still others surrounding the area. Get out of there and head toward the village. Take whatever measures necessary to save the subject. Understood. Can I get him to walk into the dynamite? Can I kick him into the dynamite? Oh, I sure can. Wait, he's not dead? He just went straight into the armed dynamite. Oh! 
Let me just check on the stream here. Make sure things looking okay. We are good. Good for us Leon, how you holding up? Bad question, Honigan. Sorry to hear that. I'm sending you a playing manual. Hope you find it useful. I'll take a look at it, thanks. Jump, jump. Por allí. No dejes que se escape. Vayan por detrás. Why are these people? Bloquea el paso. What are they planning? They're going to eat. Crank. Chainsaw. Slightly, if I am able to. Maybe not. Is there no volume controls in this game? Huh.
Where's everyone going? Bingo? Hunnigan, I have some bad news. I've confirmed the body of an officer. Something's happened to the people here. Leon, you need to get out of there. Look for a tower and follow the trail near it. Got it.
¡Un forastero!
don't you think? <clears throat> oh. You're not like them? No. You? <clears throat> okay. I have only one very important question. Do you got a smoke? Got gum. Perfect. The big cheese. What? Feeble humans. Let us give you our power. <laughs> Soon, you will become unable to resist this intoxicating power. Wake up. Ay, ay, ay. Crawl out of one hole and into another. You want to tell me what's going on here? Americano, see? Now what brings a bloke like you to this part of the world? Oh, hey, easy, whoever you are. <sighs> Name's Leon. Came here looking for this girl. Seen her? What, are you supposed to be a cop or something? Nah, you don't look the type. Maybe. Okay, let me guess. She's the president's daughter? <laughs> That's too good for a guess. Wanna start explaining? Psychic powers. Nah, <laughs> just kidding with you, amigo. I overheard one of the villagers talking something about the president's daughter in the church. And who might you be? Me llamo Luis Serra. I used to be a cop in Madrid. But now I'm just a good-for-nothing guy who happens to be quite the ladies' man. Why'd you quit? Phew, <laughs> policia. You put your life on the line. Nobody really appreciates you enough for it. Being a hero isn't what it's cracked up to be anymore. I used to be a cop myself. Only for a day, though. I thought I was bad. Somehow I managed to get myself involved with the incident in Raccoon City on my first day in the force. That is the incident with the viral outbreak, right? I think I might have seen a sample of the virus in a lab at the department. Hey boy, I'm not hey. <laughs> Do something, cop! After you! I... Now! It's Leon. Sorry I couldn't get in touch sooner, but I was a bit tied up. You're okay, right? I'm fine. There was a male civilian held captive. According to him, Ashley's in a church somewhere. What happened to him? He managed to escape. Do you have a fix on the location of that church? No, but apparently there's a secret passage in the village that leads there. I'm heading back to the village. Over here, stranger. Got something that might interest you. <laughs> 
Got a selection of good things on sale, Stranger. What are you selling? Ah, <laughs> thank you. Is that <laughs> what are you buying? Is that <laughs> thank you. Is <laughs> thank you. What are you buying? Welcome. What are you buying? What are you buying? Come back any time. Selection What are you buying? Is <laughs> Thank you. Is <laughs> see that guy. Come on. Come on, man. What are you buying? <laughs> Thank you.
Hay un rumor, hay un extraño entre nosotros. Nuestro jefe se curará de la rocha. Si la plaga es mucho mejor que la nuestra. <risa> Same blood as us, it seems. Nevertheless, you're an outsider. Just remember, if you become unpleasant to our eyes, you'll face severe consequences. What? Same blood? Leon, I've been able...
porcelain. What are you buying? Is <laughs> Thank you. What are you selling? Is that all? <laughs> Is that all? <laughs> Thank you. Ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Thank you. Ah. <laughs> Thank you. Is that? <laughs> what are you buying? Is 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 That what are you buying? <laughs>
What are you buying? <laughs> Thank you. What are you buying? What are you selling? Is that all strength? Is that all? <laughs> Thank you. Agárrenlo! 
got some rare. What are you buying? What are you selling? Is it? <laughs> Thank you.
Gotta select. What are you buying? What are you selling? Ah. <laughs> Thank you.
Hello, who has joined me? Oh, hey, Jake, it's just me. Hello, how's it going? Hello, just watching the stream. Sounds good. Speaking of which, I'm going to double check and make every sure everything looks good on Twitch, and I think it does. Okay. Cool, Resident Evil 4. Yes, indeed. I've never actually played any Resident Evil games. Oh, you should. This is a good one to start with, because it's pretty oh, straightforward. That's a lie. Uh, it's a lie. I have played just one before on the PlayStation 1. I don't know which one it is. I just remember the zombie scene and then just uh, <laughs> throwing away the control and running away out of the room. Uh, that's all I can remember. It would have to be one, of the, it would have to be one two, or three, because those were the only ones on the first PlayStation. I just remember being very young, and uh, it was pretty shocking to see the zombie. I'd never played anything like that before. Oh yeah, they uh, they threw Good you memories. in pretty much. They threw you yeah. in pretty much right in the deep end. I hate this puzzle. But aside from that, uh, I don't really know much about Resident Evil. Uh, it's pretty much every game is some variation of. Some sort of biological experiment gone wrong, creating zombies or some sort of creature, pretty much. Even like one through. Like a... Even from, from one to seven, the gist is basically evil company or some sort of something, scientists experimenting on something and hey, uh, making a virus that turns people into zombies and. Pretty much, pretty much just that. Some kind of going to be that. Just fine. My name's Leon. I'm under the president's order to rescue you. What? My father? That's right. And I have to get you out of here. Now come with me. Although this one is more, this one is a little bit different because cult it's Leon. kidnaps the president's daughter. Subject. Good work, Leon. And I'll send a over right away. you have to rescue her. The and there's like point? a cult, and there's they have trail that you can take this weird parasite the that controls people. And and there. Got it. I'm on my way. It's not it looks like a recurring theme for Capcom. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is made by Capcom, right? Yep, 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 yep. This is, uh... They also made the... They also made the Dead Rising series, which I'm a very, very big fan of. Yep, yep, same, I uh, mostly enjoy company. the Dead Rising 2, uh, although I have played Dead Rising 1 and 3. Oh, I love Four, the first I'm one not and the second it, one. But the third one, I really uh, had difficulty running in the first place. Uh, On extremely PC. low... Uh, Fresh rate, every fresh rates hmm. was the big problem. It, it, I mean, don't get me wrong. Compared to the Rising Two, it was a huge, gigantic world, and I think that was contributing to the problem. Yeah, I don't know if it's. It might be. I think it was originally a console exclusive, so they. If you played it on PC, it might be some poor optimization coming through. And uh, the number of zombies too. Now that I'm uh, starting to remember. But uh, the Rising 2, I really enjoyed. Uh, in fact, I like I, the two. I, yeah, I like sure. the weapon. The the combining the weapons was I thought really neat. Yeah, it was a good mechanic. Uh, I, I had it on the PS3 actually, and uh, I do oh, remember yeah, finishing it so many good. times that after a while I had devised a particular run sequence so that, that I could get to do everything exactly in order, rescue everybody and everything. Yeah, that's how they all are. Well, I've played the first two. I haven't touched the third one, but. They're like, oh. if, if you want to do uh, everything, you have to do it in a very certain way. Otherwise, it's hard to rescue everyone. I know from the first game, you have to do it in a very it's specific good, yeah, order. They do give you the option of doing it your own way. You don't have to follow the story missions. Yeah, some of the optional bosses are really cool. Uh, Dead Rising is one of those games where, like, it's kind of not the best at any one thing, but it does a bunch of cool things, like being able to pick up things and use them as a weapon, and all the like side content, like, it's just, uh, it's a kind of a jack of all trades kind of game. It's a very different feeling than Resident Evil. So many different weapons as well, and uh, you can memorize your locations and pretty much just pick them up. Yeah. And, uh, if I remember uh, right, you can, uh, you can give a weapon to, uh, a survivor and it would never uh, get destroyed even if it has say just one magazine or one particular bullet and it just uh, they can actually use it forever and ever yeah 
Um, Dead Rising, I think, is one of those games where Resident Evil is more of like a linear, like story experience, whereas Dead Rising is more of that like kind of play it your own way and like not open world, but sort of you get that like sandbox and you can kind of play around in. Whether it's, it's the mall level, or feel like it's a, Vegas or whatever. It's a lot easier for uh, Dead Rising because uh, you can uh, pretty much expect. Uh, you know what's coming. Uh, carry food with you, weapons, etc., etc. Yeah, yeah, you can stock up. I remember inventory management in that game being tricky because, like, you want to carry, uh, you want to carry weapons Got with you, but you need to carry food and other items. <laughs> the version does have co-op too, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, there's a multiplayer mode where you get to uh, ride your motorcycles and uh, just uh, chop off zombies. Thank but uh, I'm pretty sure there's also a co-op mode through the story. I never played the co-op. That'd be cool. I never. I gotta play more. I gotta. I just actually got num I got the first one on Steam, uh, not too long ago. Um, I'm the fam more familiar with the first one, although I really like the second one as well. Um, I think the second one is actually made by. It was published by Capcom, but I think it was made by an American studio. The first Dead Rising was made by a Japanese studio. Not that it really matters that much, but. Different perspectives, I guess. Don't really know much about the publishers, but uh, what I do know is that uh, the Rising One was Xbox exclusive for uh, pretty yep. much the entire time. Except, yeah, I remember uh, that. Yeah. Yeah, it came out to Steam a couple of uh, maybe two or three years ago. Yeah, I remember that. I remember because I had a three. I bought a 360 back in 2000, early 2007. I bought a 360, and I remember. Dead Rising was one of the big, uh, big games for 360 that was exclusive in like 2006. So yeah, around the time I got my 360, that was like one of the few. That and Gears of War were like the few like early uh, 360 exclusives. I believe they also made a port for the Wii. As a matter of fact, uh, there was a Wii emulator that was out there to use uh, to run the game. Yeah, yeah, Dolphin. Dolphin's really good. I have never, I haven't uh, run. I haven't run uh, Dead Rising on Dolphin, but I just remember that the Wii port of Dead Rising was not so great because the Wii obviously couldn't handle like all those zombies on screen at an acceptable frame rate. That's true. For one thing, there's a uh, significant differences between the original game and the Wii port. Uh, not every boss is out there. Not every mission is there. I think there's a boss that you get to fight in Dead Rising One with a chainsaw. Uh, yeah. That boss has been cut down from uh, the Wii port. Yeah, I, I remember, I never had the Wii port, but I do remember watching, like, videos on YouTube of it, just because it was, like, an oddity of, like, everybody knew, like, how are they going to get this to run? Because the game, like, pushed the 360 to its limits, you know? So, like, the Wii was significantly less powerful, so it was one of those, like, technological oddities of, like, how are they going to get this to work on the the CPU and the, the GPU that's like significantly less powerful. I mean, I would know, I did try to run, uh, I did actually successfully run uh, Dead Rising 3 and finish it, but before, uh, this was after I actually upgraded my computer to this laptop that I have right now. Before that, my older computer, it was by HP, uh, it would not be able to run uh, the, uh, the game. It, it did have a good processor, it just didn't have a good, good enough GPU. Yeah, if you run, like, if you buy a computer that is, like, not... I mean, I don't know how much it is anymore, but, um, integrated graphics has gotten better, but how it used to be was, like, if you buy, like, a desktop all-in-one, it's just kind of, like, a basic thing. It has an integrated graphics card, and it's they're not really made for gaming. They're more made for just desk work. Yep. They don't have, uh, uh dedicated like the, GPU. Uh, CPU power pull you. But yeah, no, Dead Rising's great. I would, uh, I need to play the first one more. I've played this so many times for streaming. The first one does not actually have co-op, and uh, it's funny because I was led to believe that it does actually have co-op, and I was uh, kind of excited to uh, try out this new feature, co-op on uh, Steam. It turns out it does not have co-op. It's just the original game that's been ported. I yeah. don't think there's anything new. No, I don't there. think there is either. So, I think it's a straight port, because I think they did the same thing. Yep. They ported it to PS4 and Xbox One. I believe it's the same thing. It's just a straight, you know, straight port. I think it runs. It runs better. Like it runs at like a locked 60, I think. Whereas like the original game on 360 like chugged a lot. Um, but I think the port 
it runs a lot smoother, no. but there's no like bonus features, I don't, I don't believe. The Resident 2, though, uh, is a different story. It gets pretty fun, especially on co-op, and uh, particularly for multiplayer, if you can actually get enough people. I think you need to have four people to run multiplayer. What's sad is that if you have three, it doesn't work. You, you need to have four or more. Oh, uh, okay. Is it four or eight? I don't remember right. Is it but, versus uh, there's or is also it... So, uh, the thing about the Resident 2 is that it's not just the one game. There's also a different version of it that is out there. Only uh, on the different version, you get to play as Frank West, the protagonist from oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Resident 1. Although, on the other one, which uh, is my absolute favorite, you get to play as the new character, Chuck Queen. Yeah, who, yeah, by I the way, that. does return in Borderlands. Uh, I guess they Borderlands. Who does return in Dead Rising 3. Yep. 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 I remember seeing that. They, there was an outcry to bring back Frank because of all the memes from the first game. The I've covered wars and all that good stuff. Yep. I don't know if it does return in Borderlands. Uh, God damn it. Say it again. Why, why do I keep repeating Borderlands? I do. I don't know if he re if he returns on uh, he Resident four. Three or not. I think. I think. But I do know. Uh, Frank's in yeah, he's three and a, four. It, it, he's a main character in uh, the Rising Four. And, I think uh, Frank's the main in all of them except for the original version of Two. I think. Uh, that's true. I do like the uh, ending for the. I'm not gonna spoil it, but I, I do very much prefer the ending on the original. Dead Rising 2 than I do in the uh, alternative world that they made for Frank West. Oh, it's see, I haven't played that one. Story. Yeah. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, they actually made two additional DLCs that are exclusive to consoles for Dead Rising 2. Yeah, they made... Uh, I think it's called uh, Case Zero. West. K yeah, Case West Yeah, or Case something. Zero and uh, Case West. Where you get to explore in the... Uh, other side stories, or explore deeper into the story behind Dead Rising 2, how the virus was uh, created and how it was uh, distributed in the first place. I also remember they did Off the Record. I don't know what that is, but I remember seeing that as well. Off the Record, that's the name. That's the one that is uh, with Frank West as the protagonist instead of Chuck Queen. Oh, uh, okay. That's what, what that is. What are you selling? So pretty much it's just an alternate word. Uh, it's very similar to the original game, but uh, there are some uh, different twists, especially in bosses. I don't want to spoil it, but uh, I do need let's to, just I say need to that certain clowns do definitely. return in the game. I definitely need to... Uh, the second one, definitely, I need to replay. I replayed the first one when I had a Thank PS4, you. and what are you buying? I my controller was, like, messed up, so the stick was, like, drifting, so, like, the way that that game works is that if you, like, flip the stick forward and I think hold the run button, you do a flip. So I was playing the first Dead Rising, and I was just flipping everywhere because the stick was drifting and I was running at the same time, so it was really annoying, so I need to replay it on Steam. I have so many memories coming back about Dead Rising 2. I remember uh, because uh, your followers are not smart enough to open doors, so you can actually lock them behind uh, doors and then uh, just go back to the safe house, do your mission, come back, and they're still out there. <laughs> and uh, some followers are just faster. They they're more aggressive. They're faster. Uh, they're better than the rest of them. So you can kind of select because you know the ones that are faster. They follow you faster into a room. So you could lock them up in there, take the weak ones inside, do your missions, and they come back and then just get more and more followers. Give them uh, OP weapons because uh, uh, weapons do actually spawn so long as you don't have them in your inventory. If you go onto a map, there's a certain weapon. You pick it up. Uh, you go back to the map again, if you reload the map, uh, the weapon is going to despawn, it's not there. But if you give it to your follower, and then you, you reload the map again, the weapon is going to spawn. So that's how you can have pretty much infinite weapons. Huh. Uh, and essentially you end up with a big, uh, massive army of followers that are uh, as aggressive as it gets. And you can just go out there and murder everything. That sounds pretty good, sounds a lot easier than uh, the first game. Everybody gets puts themselves in harm's way and gets killed. As, like. as you progress in the story, uh, the game gets a lot more difficult. You'll notice that there's a, a constant increase in the number of zombies until you reach towards the end where the zombies start to mutate. That's a very interesting twist that there is to, uh, to uh, Dead Rising 2. Ah. See, it's been so long and I honestly never... I don't... 
I don't even remember if I finished. I played the original. I didn't play off the record. Um, but I can't even remember if I finished it or not because it's been so long. It would have been on 360. Finished the, the first one? I finished the first one, yes. Oh, okay. So, but I don't remember if I finished the second one or not. I don't think that I did, actually. But I did play... I did play it, and I did like the combining the weapons together. I thought it was really awesome. I remember the ending scene for the first one. I just uh, don't remember exactly who the character was that you get to save from the general. as long as we will use this. I forget if it's timed or you just survive, I can't remember, but I bought the Mauser. Because when you upgrade the Mauser, it's one of the better handguns in the game, I believe. Need a shotgun up in here. Well, I played this, well, playing this tonight, and I played Vanquish last night, and they're both directed by the same guy. And they're both third-person shooters, although Vanquish has cover and all sorts of crazy mechanics, but same same director. I did have a look at the stream last night, only a little portion of it. It seems to be an interesting game. Although, it's a, uh, it's a, it's really fun. I like Vanquish. The thing I like about Vanquish is just, it's just straight action. There's no, there's no exactly. puzzles or, um, there's no sort of BS. There's no downtime. I think I talked about that with Stonks in the stream. But Are you okay? I was like, this game is, just has no like filler. Like most games would be like, okay, like you killed a bunch of enemies. Now let's go walk around for a little bit, <laughs> talk to people. But, like, Vanquish is like, all right, you just killed some enemies. Like here's some more enemies. Like there's always. That's what I like about it. I don't like. Games where some games. Oh, I'm like glitching out here. What the heck? But uh, I imagine Stunks uh, must have been an interesting company yesterday. But uh, back it to was the point about the game being. It was hard to hear him uh, because um, he had to noise suppress himself because of family things going on. So I barely heard him. Well, Stunks, uh, I'll be honest with you, it's just that annoying. Yeah. Uh, especially in Blue Legend games. Yep. But uh, back to your point about the game being straight action, that's exactly what I noticed and I was thinking to myself, uh, how long before this game gets, gets boring? Because uh, you don't seem to have access to too many different weapons. It's just uh, I... some rifles and shotguns that I noticed, noticed you were using. Yeah, I don't like the sniper just because in Vanquish just because the whole game is about moving around and being fast. So, And also the sniper rifle only holds like 5 or 6 bullets or something. They get something really small. So. Sniper kind of sucks in Vanquish. Um, they did add, like I talked about it on the stream, but I think they added guns to the game because there was guns in the game that I didn't remember. Like there was a pistol. I don't remember a pistol in like the 360 version of Vanquish or the PS3 version. Um, so I don't know if they added guns, but there's a good amount of guns. It's just that I guess that's also one of the game's issues is that like. Why would you use, like, there's, like, the disc launcher. Like, the disc launcher is terrible. Like, it's slow. It doesn't even kill them in one shot. Like, I, I would just, I'm just going to use the assault rifle. So, there's a lot of guns in Vanquish. It's just that, like, a lot of them are, like, useless. Like, why would you use them? Like, the standard assault rifle that you get at the beginning is, like, one of the best guns in the game. Because it has, like, a high rate of fire, high damage. Like, they give you plenty of ammo for it all the time. Yeah, I saw you were using it against the uh, metallic monster as well as that. I don't know the name. Yeah, and um, the shotgun's good too. Kind of difficult. I mean, the, the boss seemed to be pretty powerful, but I also noticed that your character was able to avoid dying pretty easily by just sliding on the floor. Yep, I mean, that's the game's big gimmick. Slowing is down it, time yeah. and... Is it has slow-mo, has bullet time, it has like... You have, I don't even know what you call it, but... It has, um, yeah, you can like glide on the floor if you dive and then you press the aim button, you do like, uh, you, you go into slow motion, you can aim better. That's like the game's big gimmick. It's basically just a, it's basically, it's a very good 
third person shooter, but it's a very standard third person shooter until you start doing like all the crazy sliding around. On the floor. It does uh, go back to my original concern about how long before this game gets boring. It, it's not a super long game to begin with. I don't remember Vanquish being... Okay, my controller is like actually funny, I don't know why, but... Um, I don't remember Vanquish being a super long game. I think it's... I think it's like an 8 to 10 hour game. And I don't really think it gets boring necessarily. It's just that like... Because they try to throw different things at you. They throw... Uh, different sorts of situations. I think that's also kind of what keeps what it going. Buying? Like, you know, there was the part, you know, there's a part that where you're in the tunnel and you have to escort the, uh, what are you selling? escort the whatever tank or whatever. I mean, they do a decent job of like throwing different things at you, but I mean, it's Is like, it's a, it's like a, uh, a, a, pref a preference, you <laughs> know, you. like there's no, variety to the game and that's like a good thing and a bad thing because because it is just straight action like you might get bored of that but also like if you want somebody that doesn't want doesn't want like okay let's go talk to some npcs let's go solve some puzzles like oh i have played games like this before by the way hello mr richard i am ready for i was gonna throw a joke but uh Jake was talking, but never mind. I, I have played games like that before. I don't know if you're familiar with Killing Floor, but oh, yeah. it's, a, it's one of those games that, you know, you get to do the same thing over and over and over. Oh, you get yeah, to use the same man. guns, same monsters, but uh, after a while... Yeah. I think Killing it's, Floor or no, room, no More Room in Hell was one of the first Steam games I ever played, like, on PC when I was new to PC gaming, and I had no idea, like, what was going on or Killing how Steam Floor runs on, like, or what any of them... Yeah, Killing Floor, yeah, like, like, runs on, like, everything, so... Or That's like what, what any so of the menus were or anything. More specifically, I was uh, talking about uh, Killing Floor 2. Uh, I do have a, well, a number of hours in that game, more than you do have on uh, Civilization. But oh, wow. after a while, uh, it, it's not about, uh, you know, the game does, never gets repetitive because uh, it's difficult to, uh, to master, it's difficult to land all those shots and uh, do a perfect takedown of a, of a certain enemy. I, I played the second one, but I played more of the first one. For some reason, the second one didn't hook me as much. They uh, ruined the game. Yeah. There, there's a lot of issues with it that I don't play anymore. You know, uh, it just uh, makes me uh, avoid the game. For one thing, I, I played the hell out of it. But for the other one, uh, it doesn't have the lore that the first one does. There's no story to it anymore. It's not scary anymore like the first one used to be. This one's just about shiny armor and some uh, easy gun. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> and I enjoyed the first one. With sound costumes and I don't know whatever heads they might have. Yeah, I enjoyed the first game a lot more. I remember playing the second one and just being kind of disappointed with Killing Floor Two. First one, the first one was also very hard, very difficult. I mean, just uh, one Gorefast comes at you and swings. Uh, once and boom, there goes half of your health. Or a flesh bound comes at you and uh, charges at you and boom, you're dead because you don't have armor on you. Although uh, the, the second one is a lot faster when it comes to gameplay. You can uh, run, you can uh, jump, you can parry enemies. So many different guns, so many different play styles. Also on a uh, unrelated note to that, but to the stream, this game has one of the few accurate reloading Mausers in a game, like every game like messes it up and the Mauser, they reload the Mauser from the bottom. Mauser reloads from the top, which this game gets right, so. Just a little cool little detail that they got right. Cool. You know what other game has uh, cool details about guns? Hmm, Borderlands? Killing 4. Oh. The level of accuracy and the sounds they make for the guns is very impressive. Oh, this game had the this game. There's a couple games I played recently um, on stream, coincidentally, and I love when they put in like the the shell or the casing hitting the floor. Like this game has it. I played No One Lives Forever uh, on stream about a week or so ago. That game also has it where the, you can actually hear like the bullets like hit the floor after you shoot. I'm a sucker for those kind of details. Leon, upstairs. 
I mean, if you're interested, you can actually uh, open the console for Killing Floor 2 and scroll down time. You can have a look at the real animations for the guns. Huh. You'll, you'll notice that it's really detailed. At least for the original guns that they put out, not these cheap guns that they're putting out nowadays. They call them the HRG weapons, which pretty much are just reskins of the original guns. And that's one of the reasons why the game has gone down the toilet. Yeah, I wasn't a fan when I played it, but I played it on I actually played it on console first. Because my PC yeah. was not for my first uh, at the time. big chunk of for the first uh, big chunk of my hours on the game, I used to play with the controller. And incidentally, uh, by that time, I decided to swap to the mouse and keyboard, and I had a really difficult time. Uh, learning the game again with a mouse and keyboard, and after that, I was once I uh, pretty much learned how to use a mouse and keyboard. Thanks to Joe for uh, I prefer to use a mouse and keyboard all over for any games. Yeah, I mean, it, it's going from controller to mouse and keyboard is a huge learning curve. Like, I'm still not amazing with mouse and keyboard, but I've gotten a lot better. Um, the thing is, that for the shooters, for controller. first person games, I prefer. Always prefer mouse and keyboard for a first person. Like but you see, using a controller uh, for shooters, first person shooters, gives you the illusion that you're actually good at the game. <laughs> Turns out, no, there is there is huge effect by the aim assist. Yeah, you do. You, most most console shooters have aim assist. Uh, some of them you yeah, can turn it off, but if you turn it off, the game is like Grand Theft Auto. Remember, Grand Theft Auto 4 has very generous like lock on actually, not just aim assist, but like, Grand Theft Auto 4 has lock on and you can turn it off, but if you turn it off the game becomes extremely difficult because the enemies deal lots of damage and by the time you were able to focus your cursor on the enemy, they've already lit you up with bullets and you're probably dead. So Richard vs Julian. Oh no, he's muted. By the way, if you're wondering why there's so many emojis and uh GIFs of King Julian from Madagascar on the Discord. It's because of Richard. You can thank him for that. I don't get what the whole. I don't. I don't. I don't I've never seen Madagascar, <laughs> so I don't get any of that stuff. Well, uh, Penguins of Madagascar is a very cool animation. Pretty funny, you know, for kids and also for me. I like it. I think I did but see the first one because I was. I was like. 10 or 11 when the first came out, when the first one came out, so like, I was kind of getting out of animated movies, I was kind of getting a little bit too old for that stuff in like 2005, but I was It's still... a general trend with uh, animations like these, that uh, as the sequels come out, the quality also significantly drops. It's like your audience is not uh, mature people anymore, it's for kids, you know, very young kids. Kind of like with Kung Fu Panda. The first one was very good. It's made, you know, not for kids, it's made for, for anybody. Everyone. Yeah. The uh, second one was okay, but the third one, it's like it's made for, you know, a very young child. Yeah, they just degenerate. Uh, yeah. It's very childish. Uh, but I was anyways, gonna, I uh, was gonna play till I was gonna play till Act 1, and then I realized that I'm now on Act 2, 3. So I was gonna play, I have completely, <laughs> like, just was kept going. I was gonna stop it after, I don't know, Act or Chapter? I think... The game is like uh, Mario Brothers. Like, there's like one, 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 two, one, three. That's how the levels are named. Um, I was gonna quit after, you know, one, three or whatever, one, four, or one, five, whatever it is, whatever the final one is, and then I realized I've been on two this whole time. So I might just play till the end of the village. So uh, this game is divided into three, like, major sections. There's the village, there's the castle, and then there's the island. The island's the shortest. Um, the castle's actually probably longer than the village, but they're both pretty, pretty long. Well, thanks to, uh, Discourse Limited FPS and the frames, uh, the stream looks pretty pixelated, so I'm hoping the actual game it looks prettier than this. Oh, it does. I mean, it's from 2005, but they did a they did a decent job, but there's actually somebody uh, in the community who's making HD textures for Resident Evil 4. Um, because Capcom, up like the game is up on PC and has anti-aliasing and stuff, but it is from 2005, and it's a GameCube game originally, so oh. so um, there is some textures that look uh, pretty bad uh, in 4K or in 1080p. So, um, but there is somebody in the community, it's like the Resident Evil 4, 
uh, HD project or something, or something like that, or like the ultimate HD, something like that. If you look up Resident Evil 4, like, texture mod. Yeah. And they're also remastering a lot of the games. Yeah. Uh, they are, well, they're remade, well, they remade, uh, they remade the first game back in 2002. Oh. And then they, yeah, it's El Cante, and they, um, they remade the second one in, ooh, I missed it. Oh! They remade the second one in 2019, <laughs> and then they remade the third one in 2020, I think. So, they are, they're talking about remaking this one. Um, I actually think it's not confirmed, but pretty much Which, everyone's taken as a certainty. Newer. So the new Resident Evil title releases, they're not just remakes? They are doing both. So they did, in 2017, they did Resident um. Evil 7. I think it was 2017. And then 2019, they did Resident Evil 2 remake. And then 2020, they did Resident Evil 3 remake. And then this year, I think actually next month, I think the, they're doing Resident the Evil Village. One. Oh. Which is Resident Evil 8. So Resident Evil 8 comes out, I think, like, next month or so. Like, it's very soon. And they're also working on a remake of this game. Allegedly. It's not confirmed. So, does so, uh, Ogre look like a character from uh, God of War 2? Yeah, <laughs> he does look like a God of War character. <laughs> See, yeah, God of War, I, mean, I mean, you can actually climb. I'm not doing it, but you can actually climb on his back and slash it with a knife in a quick time event, which is like God of War. This game came out the same year as God of War, and they both have uh, quick time events, so it was a big thing in games. I don't know time. if you remember, uh, it's not an older, it's got, I think it's a Cyclops. Yeah, that, uh, it's all great War mythology, II. so yeah. It looks very suspiciously similar. Mm, I don't think Bro, any it, relation, because they came out the same year, so there would have been no... They wouldn't have had time to rip uh, them off, I don't think. Well, this, came yeah. out, this came out in 2005, God of War came out in 2005, so... I'm not really suggesting anything, I'm just, uh, you know, just making observations. Well, I know for sure that um, quick time events was like a big trend at this time too. Because God of War had it, and God of War was like the biggest game on PS2, and this was the biggest game on GameCube and PS2. And... I remember there being talks of a, a character, it may have been from this game series, Resident Evil. But there being something very similar to uh, the Fleshbound from Killing Court 2. Uh, I think it may have been called Diddy Zombies. Which one? I don't remember for sure, but uh, there were talks around the community at that time. That's back, back when I used to actually care about Killing Court 2. <laughs> no, Ashley. Uh, wait, what does the enemy look like? The Fleshbound, pretty much. Oh, I don't remember. What's, what's that one? I can't remember by the name. It's the giant dude with the... Uh, the saw blades on his hands, you know, they rotate around and, you know, it, he kind of earns his name by pounding the flesh. Uh, He's a giant an enemy... dude that has a lot of health, can watch out you and killing for one. There's an enemy in this game that is, has like wolverine claws. Um, I forget the name of the enemy, but it has like, they're like literally like wolverine claws. They're like big long blades. I don't remember the name of the enemy, but... <laughs> hey church, where's Julian? Honestly, may have made too many Julian jokes that he's not even gonna show up anymore. I don't know who Julian who's Julian? <laughs> I'm waiting for Richard to unmute undefin himself so he can tell us about Julian. Julian is a buddy of Richard. Oh, okay. He likes to talk about his buddies. El Chante is dead. Now what I didn't mention was, in this part, there's it forks off and you can go left or you can go right. If you go right, which is what I did, you can fight El Cante, and if you go left, you fight uh, a bunch of villagers, including a bunch of chainsaw ladies. So you don't have to do chainsaw both. Chainsaw ladies. You will see. You don't have to do both, but if you do both, you get um, loot and things like that. Actually, I'm gonna go finish up on the right side then go back to the left side but yeah basically you only have to go left or right to f progress through the game but if you are feeling bold enough and you want to get all the loot you can go both paths and get all the collectible loot in the game so 
this uh, person that is accompanying you, can she get hurt? She by can, the enemy? yes. Yeah, she can. Yep, this is the president's daughter who you have to save. The whole game is about getting her to safety and um, obviously uh, we're not close to the end of the game, so she gets re-kidnapped a couple times. Spoilers for a 16-year-old game. But um, basically throughout various portions of the game you have to keep her safe and enemies can pick her up and carry her off. If they get to a doorway with her, then it's uh, it triggers the game over. Um, so yeah, it's it's not too bad. I mean, there is also I didn't choose to do it, but once you beat the game, you unlock a special costume that gives her a suit of armor that prevents her from being killed or carried off. So basically, it makes her like a non-factor in the gameplay. Um, cool. But I'm playing on vanilla, so she is in her normal attire, her sweater and her skirt. Uh, so yeah, there, there's, uh, there's a couple different costumes. There's Leon, who's the main character of this game, is also the main character of Resident Evil 2, and you can unlock his outfit from Resident Evil 2. Um, you can also... It's classic Capcoms. Wait, what? It's just classic Capcoms, because I know from uh, Dead Rising 2, there are so many different uh, outputs. Oh, yeah. Outputs yeah. that you can actually uh, unlock after you beat the game. Oh, yeah, they love they love that stuff. Yeah, so you can unlock... I think there's one that uh, is uh, for Sonics. You can uh, pretty much just dress up as Sonics, and they give you just different uh, superpowers. <laughs> but there's, there's um, his outfit from Resident Evil 2, which is his cop uniform, and then there's... Um, he wears, like, a... I don't even know how to describe it. He, he's dressed like Michael Jackson in, like, Smooth Criminal. He's, like, wearing, like, a suit <laughs> and, like, a hat, like... And I think that's the outfit that gives Ashley... And Ashley gets a suit of armor. So Leon dresses like a gangster, basically. With, like, a, a suit and a tie and, like, a, a trilby or a fedora or whatever. And, uh, and then oh, Ashley like, wears the suit This is not uh, directly related, but if you decide to get Dead Rising 2, uh, the original one comes with two DLCs that are pretty much just outfits. They do not work with PC, they're bugged out. Oh, huh, that's weird. So, uh, they do have a collection of the game and the DLCs together. Uh, if you decide to get it, just get the original game, not uh, the not DLC. The... Oh, okay. That's good to know. I don't know if they ever actually uh, bothered to fix this, but Probably back not. then, when I was actually interested in the game, people were talking about this issue existing, that the DLCs, which you pay for, don't work. And apparently it's been going on for a couple of years. Well, Probably I think, not, uh, yeah. Not, um, Capcom has been doing a good job lately with their PC ports, but um, traditionally Japanese developers have not been the best with PC uh, ports, but Capcom's PC yeah, ports are actually pretty good lately. Uh, Devil May Cry 5 is really good on PC, Resident Evil 2 and 3 Remake are both really good on PC, so... Everybody were complaining about how the about the fact that uh, Monster Hunter did not come to PC until after a, a long time. Yeah, Monster Hunter is a well for a long time. Monster Hunter was a like a PSP series, and then they migrated over to like Nintendo consoles. Um, I'm, not actually I'm, not a, I'm not a big fan of Monster Hunter to be honest. Me, I really don't either. like. Me I played yet. the one. I played the one on. I played it on PS4, and I just uh, wasn't for me. It looks like it has interesting game mechanics, but uh, the art style is just not something that I would go for. I couldn't just get into the, the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. Just like wasn't hooking me. Like I like the idea of hunting giant monsters, but the game is just very like I don't know. It's a little bit, a little bit obtuse and complicated. I think, and not always. Precisely what I uh, felt about the game. There's uh, not a strong guy that is with you. There's not a good enough uh, story to it. The story seems to be very generic, very simple. Yep. And uh, if you if you pay attention to your actual to your actual guy, you'll notice that her lips move without her like, making any noise. <laughs> so there's a. Uh, <laughs> so I guess read a lot of the lines and uh, they pass up so quickly, etc., etc. I appreciate the uh, some of the mechanics of Monster Hunter, but yeah, it was just never never my thing. I never got yeah. far into the game. I mean, I, as soon as I saw the dancing cats, that's oh, when I knew uh, this game was going to be me. I don't have enough ammo.
I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the way of healing this game is by eating food. The way to heal this game is herbs. So green herbs restore your health, yellow herbs give you more health, and then red herbs give you the maximum health, and you combine the herbs. So I just actually used a green herb, but like using a green, green herb on its own gives you small bits of health, using a green and red herb gets you maximum health, and using a green, yellow, and red herb gives you maximum health, and it increases your health, if that makes sense. That does make sense. I guess it is similar to uh, Dead Rising Afterworld. Uh, Resident Evil always... I think since the first game, Resident Evil's always... Herbs is a Resident Evil thing that they've been doing forever. Because I played the first game and they also use herbs, but it works differently. It doesn't work the same, but it's the same like, item, if that makes sense. This mechanic is a little bit different. They simplified it, basically. A lot of cool zombie games out there. Uh, one in particular that I'm actually very interested in uh, coming soon, hopefully coming soon, is Dead by Daylight. Oh, sorry, not that oh, one. No, Dying Dead, Light 2. Dying Light 2, yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, they, Dead uh, Light 2. They... Every, there's been rumors that that game is stuck in, like, development hell, and... And they, but they just released a trailer not too long ago that basically were like, oh, somebody sniped me. I didn't even see where that came from. Oh, um, it's yeah. been delayed a couple of times. It's supposed to come out uh, last year, I believe. But uh, personally, I think a developer should take as long uh, as they need to produce a good game, not something that is rushed because the fan base can't wait. Nope, all tabbing <laughs> out does not stop this game. Pause. Okay. But no, I agree. But at the certain, at the same time, though, like if it's taking you that long, like it's sometimes an indicator of things maybe not working. So, like if you have a good idea and you just need time to make it, but sometimes, like when you make a game or when you make anything, you have a really like radical idea, and then you just realize that there's no feasible way to actually like make it happen. So, like I don't know if that's the case, but from what they've showed of Dying Light 2, they sounded yep. really ambitious with the mechanics of the game, with the story, and the factions, and all that stuff, so I'm wondering if they just over-promised with the game and are now like running into trouble of, like, we have to fulfill all these promises. So. They, they set the bar pretty high, and also the first game was so successful and they supported it with so much DLC that... They they're still, people. by the way, they're, they are still supporting the first game. There's still events coming out, still yeah. DLCs coming out for the first game. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. And it's a very good game, too. I mean, you can just keep on uh, playing it indefinitely with up to four people. I did play that's Dying Light, I... but that's a game I didn't sink too much time into. I played maybe about three or four hours of it, and I enjoyed it, but other things just caught my attention, but I'm excited it's a game that I for, the up. First, for the second game, I mean. I picked up Dying Light 1 after I was pretty much done with Killing Floor. I was looking for a substitute, and I was hoping it was this one, uh, and it's a very good game. Uh, I remember being scared of actually going outside at night time because of the super duper zombies. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, uh, which I don't remember the name of. Uh, yeah, it, it's a very intense game. I mean, I remember my first chases in the game, running from all these zombies at night time, desperately trying to climb buildings just so they wouldn't catch you, and boom, it turns out you're, tra you're trapped in a corner with fences around you. Also, the game like, has... I don't know if you remember this, but the game has, like, a Left 4 Dead type mechanic where you can get, like, invaded by real people. It's true. You can actually disable the option, though. Yeah. Uh, there, there's a lot of crazy, uh ideas about who this mysterious uh, character is that uh, gets to uh, invade you and they do kind of hint at it at the end of the DLC for it. I don't know if you actually played the DLC or not. I didn't know. I played the vanilla game like when it came out for like okay. three or four hours. That's about as much as I I'm going to stop talking. If you haven't finished it, uh, I really encourage you to do so. I think it's I a have, very interesting I, game. I think I have it on Steam. I need to, that's another thing that I need to replay because I did enjoy it when I played it. If there's a end game, end game content to it, it's just uh, not as persistent as you might experience. I do they, remember, uh, one of the things I remember about the first game is that I think the developer is like 
Polish, so like I think doesn't the first game take place in like Eastern Europe or something? It takes place in like a really oh. unique location, it, I thought. What's interesting is that uh, as you start the game, they uh, give you the warning that anything in this game is uh, a uh, an outcome of uh, their imagination or something. Oh of the yeah, sort. like the so, disclaimer. Yeah, we don't everything yeah, is but, fictional. Uh, the setup of the game, it seems like it's happening in an uh, Arabic country. Because if you look at the names or uh, the art style or the music even, uh, it, it seems like it's heavily influenced by an Arabic uh, country. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I do remember f feeling like it definitely wasn't America. I know the developer, I think, is in Poland, actually. Yep. Uh, what is their name? Techland. Yeah, Techland's in Poland. Pretty cool that they are still supporting their uh, first game. Whoa! I can't believe that was a one hit kill. Damn. Yeah, it is cool. Um, and for I don't think really. I mean, there's a couple of paid things, isn't there? But for the most part, it's. Uh, oh, there's a uh, quite a number of DLCs. Uh, well, at least DLCs free, that just give you weapons. The DLCs just give you weapons and uh, skins, so nothing that is really game changing. Uh, a lot of the weapons are not even that uh, overpowered or reliable, should I say. But uh, there's just one major DLC called The Following that expands on the original story. It takes you outside of the city perimeters, so you get to uh, you get to see more of the world, you get to ride a car, you get to see different zombies and uh, fight bosses and of course more story. Well, back up, Leon. It does have some... Oh. It does have some very creepy moments as well. Yeah, I just, I think I'm, I'm definitely interested. I hope the second game turns out well. The thing that was uh, more interesting about the second game to me was that they were pu putting a bigger focus on, the zombies are still a focus, but they're putting also a focus on sort of like the people and also the sort of, had like a fallout thing going on with sort of like the civilization, like post-apocalyptic civilization. Yeah, I, I definitely the trailers, don't know what they, happens. If you watch the trailers, Absolutely. they kind of hint that there's like, you know, they, it's kind of a cliche in like zombie things, but like the the people are the real monsters, like kind of thing. But I find that angle of it to be more interesting. The whole like, you know, The Walking Dead and all kinds of other shows and movies have touched on it, but it's more of like how do people interact with each other after, you know, zombies or whatever have destroyed the world, basically. I definitely want to know exactly what happened to Kyle Crane. Uh, again, I don't want to spoil it, but definitely play the DLC for the future. Is the, uh, see, I, I don't do even know. know. I, I don't know if is the is the uh, the sequel going to be a direct sequel or is it going to be? No, it's going to be. Uh, I don't know exactly uh, what the lore is, but it's definitely not the first. It's not. It's not following the first. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It seemed like they were. Anything that I'm about to say next would be so spoiling it for you, so I'm not. I'm not gonna talk about the DLC. <laughs> I have it, so <laughs> I can play it eventually. I have the DLC. No, uh, I uh, wanted to do a run on the uh, most difficult uh, uh, difficulty of the game. Only I just didn't get to go through it because enemies get to be so beefy. But uh, if you decide to do co-op, I'd be down to uh, join. Yeah, for co-op, that'd be probably cranked up to hard difficulty, right? Probably be. There's a normal, there's hard, and there's also nightmare difficulty. Ooh, that's uh, awful. Uh, it's very well. See, if uh, the main difference is between the first one, uh, the first difficulty, and the hard one is that on the, fr on the on the easier difficulty, you get to know exactly where the enemies are on the mini map around you. So you have complete awareness, especially at nighttime, because uh, the mutants they, uh, if, if they if they see you, you're pretty much uh, are gonna be ha are not gonna be having an easy time. Let's just uh, put it that way. Uh, but uh, on the uh, hard mode, you don't know exactly where the enemies are because it doesn't show you on the map. 
but uh, your character also has a spidey sense where if you press this button it shows you what you can interact with and it also highlights the enemies and that's one way of getting around you have to just keep on pressing smashing the button for your uh, senses just to know where the enemies are so we kind of uh, you kind of have an idea where they are because uh, uh, the senses they uh, just uh, follow you in every direction so, uh, you have an idea of exactly what's around you the game has like a detective vision or whatever like a you know you're pretty much uh, uh, like you're describing it you can actually see uh, enemies through walls as well that they get highlighted as well oh, okay yeah I always refer to those you know Batman Arkham made the popular little like, detective vision thing you hit a button and you have like vision that lets you see I'm sorry for the uh, nightmare mode uh, it's the same for having a vision and idea of what is around you healing on the other hand uh, when you use a med pack on the easier difficulty, you instantly heal. On the second one, uh, on the hard mode, it, it's not instant, it, it regenerates after a while. That uh, reminds me of, uh, I think Fallout New Vegas uh, hardcore mode is the same way. The... That might be uh, the major difference that I remember. Uh, all I know, all I can remember is that on the Nightmare difficulty, the enemies are just so beefy. Because uh, uh, there's uh, melee weapons in the game, and there's also ranged like weapons. Yeah, yeah. Oh, speaking of weapons, uh, you can directly buy ammo for your guns on the easy difficulty, but on hard or nightmare, you can't. You have to find them in the wild. So, in this city. You do, uh, uh, scrounge for ammo. Yep. Speaking of enemies, holy cow! Look how many people there were in those towers. Definitely yeah, looking forward to see what Dying Light 2 has to offer. I am too. Because, uh, I'm interested to see yeah. if the delays. I be, I agree with the premise of it's better to give people more time, but I kind of view it like a it's like a relationship. Like if it's not working out, it's like more time isn't going to do anything. You know what I mean? Like more. What are we talking? Oh hey. We were uh, kind of missed you, you know, talking about Julian and everything. Uh, well, <laughs> I, I, I talked to him and uh, we're doing some. Is this somebody that we're trying to get? Is this somebody that we're trying to get in the Brutal Legend server? No, Borderlands. Oh, okay. Speaking of Brutal Legend, there's uh, big news coming out soon. What? I mean, big news. Oh, about the from the Discord. I thought you meant of like brutal, like the Brutal Legend, like Brutal Legend. Yeah, 2. about the game. What? There's big news coming out about the game pretty soon. I just need the... Well, once the author is ready to publish his uh, work, then we can make an announcement and let everybody know uh, what he's Ooh, been working on. A but mod. it's pretty exciting stuff. Oh god, is it another one of Poopy's mods? No, it's somebody different, but uh, I'm sure everybody's going to come to appreciate this work. <laughs> Except just for probably yours truly. No, I think I actually uh, it it does kind of solve everybody's problem about installing mods. So if there's, if there's one person that's going to like this uh, project the most, uh, I bet it's going to be you. <laughs> I'd love to see what you're talking about. Well, I can't really talk about it much. It's uh, classified. Oh, lovely. <laughs> but it has been uh, tested by yours truly and. Uh, Hair uh, metal Rick militia faction Rick mod. <laughs> yeah, I've tested it, and uh, we were supposed to test this on Windows 7, somebody that does have Windows 7. I don't know exactly how the testing is going for that Windows version. What, but on Windows everybody 10, here running pretty Windows good. 10? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, Windows 10 is free, yeah, or was free, so I imagine pretty much everybody has Windows uh, There's 10. There are some people that st still swear by Windows 7. I mean... I mean, I do too, but I'm, I was I, I'm one of those gonna, people. I'm not gonna discount Windows 10. Windows 10 is still a worthy successor. Like, put it this way: if Windows 10 had never come out, Windows 7 would still be very serviceable. We're not uh, updating it anymore, so there's that. Yeah, and also, this I, computer that I bought, it, it I, came with Windows uh, 10, which is why I uh, 
did not bother to go back to Windows 7. I just well, didn't have incentive. A mind-blowing thing I learned is there's going to be no more Windows, like, up, like there's not going to be a Windows 11, according to Microsoft, allegedly. Thank you. They're just going to keep. They're just going to keep, gonna keep iterating on Windows 10, basically. Or well, they're going to come up with something new, like doors. <laughs> DOS, they're gonna bring back DOS. MS DOS is coming back. I don't know, door sounds like a good cool idea. Maybe if I uh, get to get into the uh, developing uh, field, I might make doors. You're gonna make your own oper you can make your own uh, operating system. Is it gonna be Linux I'm based? A, I'm just gonna call it doors just to piss off Microsoft and Bill Gates. It's very close to DOS. MS DOS. I did not know about DOS, so that's my own idea. DOS is old Doors. school. DOS is old school. Microsoft Disk Operating System. That was basically the operating system that PCs ran before Windows. Why are we talking about Windows? I don't know what I was talking about. Oh yeah, the project that is coming up soon. Testing. Yeah, you're talking about testing various versions on different. And it's not an April Fool's. Uh, it's not an April Fool's uh, joke, by the way. And speaking of that, I did actually have something in mind for today, I just decided not to go with it. For an April Fool's joke on the server? On the server. Yep. For Brutal Legend, uh, everybody was talking about it, so uh, it was pretty obvious that if I were to post something, they would uh, instantly jump to the conclusion that it's the joke. I was waiting for you to say something about Brutal Legend too. God damn it. I mean, if it wasn't... Ex so obvious and the lowest hanging <laughs> fruit available. <laughs> like, <laughs> so maybe I not. Think you, I think I would have had a harder time guessing. Hey, what's behind my back? <laughs> I do want I, my ultimate dream for Brutal Legend modding is to get a fourth faction that doesn't just reuse units like different skins. I don't even know if it would be possible with like the code of the game, but it would be really cool. I think to have like a fourth faction. Maybe it is possible. Not, uh, I don't really know much about game development to make an opinion, but uh, I'm just not from, sure if it'd be uh, compatible I... with like. I mean, I'm trying to think of like how the game like. It depends on I guess how the game is like set up to where like the factions are loaded. I don't know. It would depend a lot about like different things with the code and. Although they were planning a fourth faction, so it might not be as hard as that. Might not be that I mean, hard. doesn't have doesn't Fleetus' character model have wings on his back? Yeah, well, I just wanted to mention that actually. If you look at the back, you'll see that he has wings, uh, and it's more obvious on uh, the artwork for the game. That kind of like the fact that he was supposed to be like the fourth faction, like what are you don't don't they mention buying? like his friends or something or what are you I think I remember in one of the in one of the races he mentions like having there being more of him somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so many dialogues in the game that if you can interact with the characters, they'll be uh, popping up. That's one of the things I like about having a pair of headphones with this with that game is I'm hearing like a lot of combat barks that I never heard before. The game has a lot of like little pieces of dialogue. Like I didn't know until I started using headphones that your your units will let you know when an enemy avatar is near death. Oh yeah, that's a that's a huge thing that you can guess. When, uh... Yeah, because then you know the razor girls would be like, we almost got him. Like, yeah. Boss fight. <laughs> Hasta luego. Hasta luego. So Richard, tell us about uh, the situation about the fourth player. I don't know. <laughs> I don't that know. That means you don't have a fourth player yet? I guess not. Huh. No one about, that, uh, no one, no one that is consistently available. Everyone's everyone's always doing it's annoying. It's like there's some guys who used to play on the server that I'm like, I'm gonna message and be like, hey, do you wanna play? But like, they're always playing other games. Oh, I know just one person. You know who does that? 
But I don't know why you guys keep insisting on finding a fourth player. I think three yeah, is just. Yeah, that's uh, actually why I came in here. You guys to play just to get a small me. No, I did hurt you. I only uh, just watching the stream trip. Hold on, stream is already for We will play. If we're not going for a fourth player, we can play uh, BL anytime. I guess not anytime, but it's easier to coordinate. Uh, it's easier to coordinate three people versus four. Also, you don't have. Oh. Wait, what? There's a. What's that? I'm I'm playing Tekken right. There's a new DLC coming out for Borderlands 3 uh, on April the 8th. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Must be many boss, but it didn't uh, look like it was too difficult to beat. Wait, what? Just didn't look like it was a difficult boss to beat. Uh, he's just tricky because his range on his weird tentacle things were kind of tricky. But also, also, I don't have any, like, I don't have a rocket launcher or any, like, you can cheese this if you buy a rocket launcher and it kills him in, like, one hit, I think. But I, in this game? There is a rocket launcher. Rocket launcher in this game is, like, a one-time use, and it basically is just to kill bosses. It's, there's no point in using it on normal enemies, but it's basically a way to, like, cheese bosses. Also, I haven't upgraded the shotgun. Upgrading the pistol and the machine pistol. That's pretty cool that you can upgrade weapons in this game. Uh, you can, and every weapon, once you upgrade it to the max, is a special uh, special upgrade. Like the pistol, the starting pistol has like a headshots, it's, you're 15 times likely to get headshots. One of them, uh, upgrade lets you shoot through people. So every weapon has like a unique uh, special upgrade once you buy all the other upgrades. But yeah, you can upgrade damage, reload speed, clip size, all that stuff. Is there anything visual uh, about the upgrades? No, there's not. The only visual things that change with the weapons is you can put a stock on the the Red 9 and the uh, machine pistol. So I have a stock on this and you can see it. It's longer. That's the only visual change to the guns. This game was rocking uh, pretty good visuals and pretty good detail for 2005. I mean, this game was a GameCube exclusive. It wasn't even like a PC or original Xbox exclusive. So. Yeah, it does look pretty good. Besides, none of the textures you can touch besides being in 4K, or not, I don't even know if I'm running in 4K, but besides being in HD, I should say, the resolution. Basically, he has two phases. We're gonna attack him, and then his torso will separate from his top half. I mean, his bottom half.
I'm in green and that's a one hit kill. I mean, I am playing on the hardest difficulty, but we're going to cheese this fight. I have so much money. It's cheese in time. Welcome. I can, I'm going to show you brutal the cheese strats. Got to what are you buying? Oh, I like cheese. We cheese in it. Wait, hold on. I got to redo my inventory here. It's a mess. See, that's the stock that I have for the Red 9. That's the stock I have for the machine pistol. It's like Tetris, basically, to get this rocket launcher to fit in my, <laughs> fit in my inventory. Well, Tripwire actually spent some uh, creativity for the upgrade system they was for Killing 4-2. What are you buying? What are you buying? Yeah, that Lion White mod, I might be cool with, because I saw it today on YouTube. Wait, what I might Lion be cool with it. It's a, it's, it's a full Lion White mod, like all the textures and everything. You can play as him. Um, what? It's cool. Everything's like glitterized, like his faction. Oh, um, you don't have any... You don't have any solos to play as Lion White, except for the fan tribute and I believe face melting. Yeah, well you get the you get the battle cry too, but the battle cry is instant. You actually don't even play a solo, you just select it and it activates. So is a face monster, I think. Yeah. She's kinda kinda I'm kinda too good. I can't wait to get my hands on a uh, model for Lion White's hair so I can put it on Divicious. <laughs> I don't know how everybody liked the, uh, I guess the meme that I posted earlier today of uh, Divicious Eddie's hair. Some of, the, uh, some of the, I didn't see it, but some of the uh, source filmmaker uh, things that have been made have been very entertaining. I've been using a lot of them for my switch. We'll be right back. Yep, I love that one. Diviculus on the, uh, the toilet is probably still my favorite. Why do you need his eye, man? It's just gross. <laughs> The door is uh, activated by eyesight, whatever. Scans the eyeball. Interesting how the eyeball is so perfectly preserved. It's a false eye. It's supposed to be not uh, flesh. I think it says it. I think so. Yep, false eye. We can examine it. There is a code-like pattern etched inside the iris. It opens the gate to get out of the village. So this is a mandatory boss, unlike the other uh, Cyclops-like boss or the Wolverine likes. He's mandatory. There is there is optional bosses in the game. There is an optional boss in the game that is basically the predator like it looks like the predator that's later on in the game that's in the castle he's an optional boss because you can take the elevator and run past him um I'm trying to think if there's any other optional bosses el Yante is mandatory well no you're right so you can fight the chainsaw ladies if you go left and you can fight el Hante if you go right 
but you do have to fight El Chiante once earlier, I think before you started watching. I fought him, actually. So you fight him once, and you can fight him again, but it's optional, technically. And this part is also optional. I'm gonna about to do. There's a piece also, of loot. I got to here. ask if uh, does the girl actually do anything for you? Uh, you not you really. Up? You just have to not get her killed. No, it's not like Elizabeth from Bioshock Infinite or anything where she gets <laughs> Man, it's like you can read my mind. Yep. Yeah, no, nope, nothing like that. I just got to. But, uh, but unlike Elizabeth, unlike Elizabeth, Ashley can be killed like right there. She just got killed. So, Ouch. yeah, I mean, Elizabeth, I get what they were going for. I mean, Bioshock Infinite, completely different subject, but um, I get what they're going for. But it's like, would you put, excuse me, would you put an NPC in a game that can die, who you have to escort, it can be frustrating. But if you have an NPC who's like with you, but they're invincible, it's also kind of uh, takes you out of the game. Version breaking. It's a common thing for multiple games. Say God of War 3 and Pandora, where you have to escort, escort her through the end of the game. Uh, she does not die. In fact, you can see her dodging attacks in the game. So it's kind yeah, of a... it's like a, it's definitely like a compromise of like game design. Where you're like, okay, well, you have to escort this NPC, and NPCs can do stupid things like get themselves killed. Or you can have an NPC who's just invincible. Where it's more for like the fun factor. Because obviously escorting an NPC is not the most fun thing you can do in a game. But sometimes... Oh god, no. But sometimes people, developers want to do it for story reasons, like Bioshock Infinite. They clearly wanted it to be like a rescue story. Although I could argue Elizabeth actually rescues Booker. I mean, yeah, she's more powerful than he Welcome. is in the end. Got a selection, what are you selling? Ah. Is this still in the village? We are still in the village. We are about to leave the village. Just wanted to sell the last major piece of loot I had, so. Obviously you can find treasure in this game, and certain pieces of treasure combine together to form more valuable pieces of treasure, like that beer stein I just sold. If you put three cat's eyes in it, it becomes more valuable. If you just sold it on its own, it would be not as valuable. So it's how you maximize getting uh, loot and then getting money, which you can use to upgrade your weapons. What about the trader? Is it just a random character, or does uh, it really tied to the story? He's not tied to the story, really. Um, he's just he is like, oh, come over here, and he like inter he basically is just like, I'm just gonna sell you guns. Like it's it's literally like not tied <laughs> to the story at all. It's just like he just is some dude who just sells you guns. But some random guy. Some random guy, but it's it's still a cool character because it's just his voice and how random it is. So that's the castle, that's the second major area in the game. And uh, why do you have to go through the castle if your goal is to rescue the girl? Well, we have nowhere else to go, I think. I feel like that would be an obvious question. Well, no, because... Uh... In the gameplay dialogue, uh, your your character was told that uh, a helicopter would be expected. Well, is it well, here? I think they well spoilers, but their helicopter gets shot down at one point. Ashley, you stupid bitch! Ah, oh, I shot you. You're dead. No. Well, the thing is, <laughs> if, if you know anything about like police work and stuff like that, even if you know a chopper is coming, you can't just sit there for however many hours because you have an unidentified amount of time to wait. So, you, and what if the chopper never comes? Now you've been sitting there for five hours doing nothing. So, um, yeah. So he has a no to go and I, I mean, I assume that's what he's doing. I'm not watching right now, but I. We're we're just we're I'm literally at the part, Richard, where I killed the village leader. 
and we're leaving the village to go to Salazar's castle. Mm. You've played this game. I've seen your Steam hours. <laughs> Oh, I thought it was just like me and over here. Although I've got you beat because I've been playing this game since 2005, so... I hope, uh... I hope you enjoyed that game as much as I do. I love Resident Evil 4, of course. I've played through it, like, I feel like 20 Resident times. Resident Evil 4 is the perfect blend of first person shooting and horror because as a kid i was afraid you mean of that third person but yes i agree third person yeah um did you say two as when i was a younger kid i was afraid to play that game but i also loved killing zombies so it was a delicious blend of can't put it down and want to put it down so bad the thing the game does best is there's you're always doing something different. Like, we talked about Vanquish and if that can get old, but that's what's so good about Resident Evil 4 is, like, you're always going to a different environment or there's some sort of new gameplay mechanic. You're riding on the minecart. You're you're surviving as long as you can. You're, you know, there's always something new going on, which is why the game's so good. And obviously the shooting and the action is just top tier. I think I'm gonna go to the merchant and then I think I'm gonna call it there after I Welcome. Got some rare things on sale. What are you buying? Is, <laughs> is that all? <laughs> yeah, so this is... Thank you. Let me pick a gun that I haven't... So yeah, you can see, like, the other upgrades aren't available right now, but... That's how you upgrade your guns. Is <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> What are you buying? Is <laughs> oh, sweet. I Thank got the larger you. case. I needed that. Is I'm going to buy the rifle. If I can finagle it in my inventory. Looks like there's a lot of streaming Resident Evil 4 tonight. There's what? There's a lot of people streaming Resident Evil 4 tonight. Oh. I mean, it's a pretty popular game. And also, Resident Evil 8's coming out soon, so that also could be part of it. I wonder if there's anybody in Blue Legend tonight. Don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Is no, nope, there's literally no one. <laughs> Thank you. What are you buying? <laughs> Thank you. Come back. Any time. I did some games against the AI earlier with the Coil Plus mod, and I have to tell you, it gets really difficult, especially if you let the AI to get the geysers. Because uh, on that mod, uh, the other factions, except for Coil, they get uh, significant discounts on build uh, costs or building times. And they also start with more fans, so if you play as Coil, which is the only normal faction, and you let the enemies get uh, the fan geysers, you're sort of kind of almost doomed. There's no way to make a comeback after that. Well, I'm going to interrupt your uh, brutal legend talk to say that I'm ending the stream. Thanks, everybody that watched or is watching on Twitch or YouTube. I'm probably going to upload this to YouTube, so you'll find out if you're watching it on YouTube. Okay. Bye-bye.